Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome on stage another speaker, Mr. Daniel Saim, who will give a talk on the struggles in the world of fashion. Well, Daniel Saim is one of the most famous designers from the Northeast, known for his ethnic collection. He showcased his designs at the Northeast Fashion Fest, Delhi chapter. Daniel Saim knew that fashion world was his destination when he realized his true vocation, and that is fashion. Recently, he showcased in the LACME Fashion Week Summer Resort 2013 in the emerging category. He received a tremendous response from the press, fellow designers, as well as national and international buyers. In the year 2000, he won the Northeast Best Designer Award and there has been no looking back ever since. He has presented various collections all over India as well as abroad and his repertoire of fashion show is immense. He has a string of awards recognizing his unique international style and focusing on promoting organic and ethnic material exclusive to the northeastern region of India. His forte in western wear is apparent in the clean silhouettes, seamless fluidity and interesting drapes in his collection. Daniel's aim is currently working on his huge collection that he will be showcasing in the Kitio New York Fashion Week 2014 in a few weeks from now. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the great Daniel's aim. Okay. Very good afternoon to everyone. Sorry, I need to. Sorry for the limp. Um, I would just like to start by uh, by thanking. Uh, Deepak and, and the entire team at uh, TEDx UTM Shillong for having me here. It's quite an honor. I guess um, I'm here to talk about certain aspects of my life, about my struggles in my life as a designer, how it all started, you know, that, that dream slowly turning into reality. Uh, but I must say I'm a man of few words. So I'm not going to say much. I don't like to talk much about my work, so I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to keep it short. I want to start by I want to start by talking about uh, about my background, about my life, and how it all started. I remember going back to my earlier days. I remember being very, very passionate about fashion, and clothes, and being inspired by them. And um, you know, I was I was one of those I was one of those kids, you know, who'd be doing random sketches on the notepads and and getting caught by the teacher and getting scolded in the classroom because I'm busy daydreaming and fantasizing about these beautiful designs. And uh, I also remember, like I fondly remember, you know, those winter nights during my winter holidays, where I'll be at home styling my mom and my sister. And I have to admit, I'm not ashamed to say this now, I, I, I did play with my sister's dolls once. You know, so <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say that anymore. And uh, so eventually growing up, I got more and more exposed to the fashion industry. You know, through media, through magazines. And I became more and more convinced that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a part of that world, you know, to create something beautiful you know, and make people feel good about themselves. And I remember the time when I went to my father, telling him about this dream, that I wanted to be a designer. Now keep in mind that this was a time when, uh, when Shillong was, you know, when fashion designing in Shillong was just, was never taken as a serious profession. People would just take it up as a hobby. And uh, I was encouraged to do that. You know, I was, I was encouraged to take up, to, to, to join a college and, and, take, uh, and take a normal degree. You know, so I, I, I joined St. Edmunds College. And uh, little did I know that this would embark me into the, into the journey, you know, into this journey into the fashion world. You know, because this is how it actually, it actually started. In dreams begin reality. So I joined St. Edmunds College, and uh, it, was, it was in my final year in college when, uh, you know, it was doing our college festival. And uh, I remember going to the principal and coming up with this great idea of having this, this big fashion show in college. And, you know, the first ever fashion show in St. Edmunds College. 
and with the help of with the help of my um, with the help of my friends and my teachers i was able to i was supposed to i was i was i was able to do that i was supposed to i was able to organize the first ever uh, fashion event and also keep in mind that this this was a time when we had a first batch of uh, female um, female students you know so save most of my male friends from for the embarrassment of you know walking down the ramp in female attire so you know so we actually had beautiful beautiful females walking down the ramp and the show was a hit the show was a hit and the theme of that year's college week was in dreams begin reality and i knew that i knew then that that i wanted to make my dream of being a designer a reality so i graduated i graduated from college um i was i was invited to participate in a designer contest i won the i won the contest won best designer of the year and i was ecstatic you know i was i was overjoyed i thought you know this was it you know this is it this is the beginning of my of my my dream coming true and little, little did i know that little that i know of the hurdles that were in front of me but then i carried on i i carried on with this dream and uh, so i made up my mind that you know i i'm going to get into the industry i'm going to get myself trained i'm going to study fashion i'm going to learn whatever i'm going to do whatever it takes to be the best so i rolled in myself into one of uh, one of the fashion institutes in delhi and you know i went, i i i i went there and uh, and uh, yeah i'm sorry yeah um okay before i get to that so i i went to delhi i i i i got myself into in this institute you know i was all geared up to 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 study and to absorb everything there was to know about fashion you know and and to to be this to be this number one designer and but due to un, unavoidable circumstances i had to drop out of college i had to drop out of the institute and i was devastated you know i i felt that that this was my first step into the fashion world and and i had to walk out of it you know i had to quit i had to give up and i was devastated i was crushed i felt about like you know i was i was losing out on my losing out on my dream and uh, and then so i continued to stay in delhi you know i i i thought like i'll give myself a chance you know i thought i'll i'll, I'll try out different career options and uh, I remember I remember joining a call center that's where I learned to you know this this fake american accent you know and I did that for a weeks and I a few, few for a few weeks and I quit you know I couldn't do it and I have so much of respect for these people who are doing that you know like day in and day out and you know and I mean hats off to them but so that that was my life that was my life in delhi for a while and uh, and then and then after a few years being there and loving it and no matter how gruesome it was i decided to come back home i decided to come back home this is a part of my life which i called lost and found i remember coming home being being very disappointed with myself being devastated you know i had i i left home with this dream of coming back coming back being this great established designer because i remember promising myself before i left for delhi i was like you know this is what i'm going to do i'm going to go to delhi i'm going to study i'm not going to come back in 10 years time i'm going to make sure that when i come back i make this i make my family proud i make my friends proud i make the state proud this my, that was my dream but then i came back lost confused you know i was i was shattered i was unemployed i had no money you know i would spend days staying and sitting in my room not knowing what to do with my life you know my only dream the dream that i wanted to do was 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 gone i felt that i i i had lost lost hold of it so i i spent days and weeks sitting contemplating thinking about what to do next you know thinking of giving up you know because i was hopeless so i went through these these this this roller coaster of emotions and uh, but in time you know in time with the help of friends and family and with the grace of god i was able to i was able to get back on track because i realize i realize one thing circumstances can either make or break a person it's all it's all about a matter of choice 
You know, it's all, it's all in the attitude. And so I realized that I was going to do a makeover on my attitude towards life and living it. And I wanted to get back on track. So I did that. You know, with, self, with fashion being in the back of my mind, I, I ventured into doing different things. You know, I, 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 I told myself I'm going to dabble into different career options, finding out what I, what I can do best besides fashion. You know, and, and the funny thing is I, I did so many random things. I actually drove a cab for a while. You know, I drove a cab. You know, I was probably the most stylish guy driving a cab around town. You know, and uh, after that I, I worked in a cafe as a, I worked in a cafe as a, as a, as a waiter. You know, I did that for a while. And um, not, not that I'm saying that these were my career options, but I, I wanted, I wanted to, to, to get back and, and, and be faced with reality of life and know what it's like to, to struggle and not feel sorry for yourself and, and doing random things, you know, and, 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 and getting inspired and, uh, and preparing myself for bigger things ahead. So I chose to do that. And I remember, I remember um, getting a call. I remember getting a call from, from, the, uh, from the managing director of a hotel in Shillong. And, um, and remember him calling me. I was, I, was still, I was still working in the cafe, and he told me that he wanted me to he wanted me to um, to manage uh, Shillong's first ever nightclub. You know, it's called Platinum. And uh, so I was I was all excited. I remember going to my father and telling him about this, and my my brothers, and you know, so it was all very exciting. And I was like, okay, I'm going to grab this opportunity. You know, so I was, I, was, I, was, I was young, I was inexperienced, and I was going to manage a nightclub in Shillong, the first ever nightclub in Shillong. You know, and uh, I remember I had this amazing, I, I felt that I was living, I was back to living my life. And so I did that. I managed a nightclub for two years, two years. And I'll tell you, that was an experience in it by itself. If I had to talk about that, I'll probably have to come for another TEDx. You know, but, but I did learn a lot. And little, little did I know that, that me working in the nightclub would actually like, get me back on track into the fashion world. You know, and, uh, and it did. And I'll tell you how it did. You know, because, because dreams do find a way. Dreams do find a way if you believe in them. I believe in angels, you know, I believe in angels. And I believe angels come to your life to create such an impact in your life to help you change your life. That angel could be a family member, a friend, or even a stranger coming along the way, you know. And, and angels, from my experience, you know, I mean, could be these people who could, who could who could push you into, into the road less traveled, you know, push you, get you back on track, make you believe. And you're not knowing that these people are there affecting you. And my angel came in the form of a man who I met while working at the, while working at the nightclub. You know, and this man came to me and introduced himself as, as a district sericulture officer of, of, um, of Ribhoi district down in Nongpo. And his name was his name was Tennyson Lingdor. His name was Tennyson Lingdor, and uh, and um, unfortunately he passed away a couple of years ago. But but he was he was the man who got me back on track. And re little little did I realize that when he would come up to me now and then, you know, when he comes to the club on a Saturday night, he would come up to me and talk to me about about his work, about his about his about his project that he was working on. And, and little, I, little did I take him seriously, you know, cause, because I was, I was so occupied doing other things. And I remember Tenny, I remember Tenny coming up to me, you know, now and then when, when, he's, when, he, when he comes in the club on a Saturday night, he would come to me and he would be like, he would tell me about this dream project, you know, this dream project and, um, and also about, about, about how he was working with these weavers in the state in the state and how he was trying to promote this fabric, this fabric called the Rindia. 
and he was very passionate about it you know he had this huge dream of taking taking india to the world and showing it showing it you know and and and, and displaying it outside you know and uh, and he would tell me all these things so i would i would i would listen to him you know i would i would listen to him and um, and quite interested but but also like you know fear of getting back into fashion and 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 you know all these kinds of things were going through my mind so finally like with tennis persuasion i i i went down to dubai and i met i met the i met the weavers and uh, i got to feel the fabric and you know what as cliche as it sounds that was a life changing moment for me when i first went there that was a life changing moment for me you know and it was once it is it's one of those things that people talk about you know i had this instant connection with the fabric it's weird to say that but it felt like that you know and i still hold on to that feeling now and then when especially when i'm down and when i'm low i i try to go back and 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 try to remember how inspired i was at that time so you know i i got all excited i got all excited and geared up to 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 get back into fashion you know and 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 and, and learn and and start all over again you know so with tennis help we came up with projects we did shows we did we 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 started working with the rindia we started you know putting it out there you know we we started a, a project called the rindia project then we came up with a society called weaves i think uh, bernie somewhere around here she was also one of the co-founders bernie and bethlin yeah <laughs> so um yeah so that's how we started that's how we started and i remember i remember telling myself but this is what i wanted to do this is what i wanted to do with my life you know there was something inside inside me telling me and it's, i know i know that it was always there it was always there it was it was speaking to me that this is what i need to do i need to work with this fabric i need to work with these people get them out there and promote them so that became my passion that became my passion and then in time in time and after a few years of experience you know i i i came across my second angel you know her name is janison pingrop a very good friend of mine i was introduced to her to a friend and i would i would talk to her about my dreams of how i want to promote this fabric how i want to promote our people and and so janis and me would get together and we we would talk and we had this dream of coming up with this fashion house the fashion house the first ever fashion house in chillong and in the northeast for that matter and so we did that so janis and me got together and we we formed this fashion house which is called daniel's ems ethnic fashion house and with a dream to to actually promote fabrics from the northeast and to to put it out there in the world you know so we did that and the last couple of years especially the last few years have been great for us we've been out there we've been doing lakme fashion week we've been doing a lot of shows a lot of exhibitions and uh, and then uh, and then one thing comes to my mind when i'm doing all this you know i think about success you know i want to be obviously i want to be successful we all want to be successful but the thing is i come up with a question how do i define quest how do i define success for myself and i have i have one answer at least for myself i know that in so many ways i want to make a difference i want to make a difference i come from a family where my father and my grandfather are both social activists and they've done great works to you know to promote to promote our people and i've always wanted to do that also i wanted to do, to do that and use fashion as a medium so that's when i that's when i i told myself that the day the day that i can say to myself that i am successful is a day that i know that my work in this field is at least contributing to some kind of a change and making making a difference to the people around me and that is what i wanted to do so we came up with a slogan of a slogan for the fashion house fashion with a cause you know and our cause is to put our fabric our people out there in the world for people to understand and appreciate what we're all about because end of the day it's also about loving us loving your people and loving your culture and being able to identify with them so this is what i was trying to do and this is what we, this is what our dream is and this is what we've we've we 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 were striving to do each and every day and uh, 
so that's that's how it, that's how it started you know that's how it started with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the fashion house that we wanted to do fashion but fashion with a cause but then i want to ask you one thing how do you how do you how do you find a cause for yourself you know how do you find a cause for yourself i think you can do that by by finding something that by building on something that you're really passionate about you know and for me my passion is is in my culture is in my people i've come up with beautiful collections you know and beautiful designs you know we have used we have used uh, culture as an inspiration and so my dream is to do that to take my people with me where whenever i go you know to take my culture with me and make people understand and accept and appreciate appreciate who we are you know so so that is i mean this is it you know this is it the world is the world is my ramp now you know the world is my ramp but how do i stay on that ramp the few things that i want to share with you things that i that i hold on to on a, on 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 you know on a daily basis things that i always keep in mind for myself because i think these are the things that are important so that they keep us grounded and help us you know help us work towards achieving achieving our goals so i always i would like to start with the with the second point which is self discipline you know when you look at when you look at all the great but all when you look at all the great uh, the great men in this world when you look at all their achievements you know one thing one thing for sure about them is that they have some kind of self control self self discipline is something we should make sure that they have you know the greek word the greek word for the greek word for self control is a root uh, is a root word with uh, with a root word which which means to hold to hold it also describes this of people who are who are certain and who have control over something that will that will help them achieve and not fail in life i've always kept that in mind because i know self discipline is 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 difficult you know it's it's a difficult task and you have to keep you have to keep uh, you have to keep training yourself consciously and subconsciously to be able to do that because unless you don't have control over your life you don't have control over anything else integrity um i have a definition for integrity sorry i just i need to read this out um yeah i the dictionary defines integrity as a state of being complete unified when you have integrity your words and your deeds match up you are who you are no matter where you are or who you are with that is integrity sadly in today's world people people compromise a lot on com- uh, a lot of people compromise on it you know to take shortcuts to make uh, you know to, so that they'll, they'll they'll get successful faster make make more money you know but i think i think people with in- integrity you know i mean the more integrity you have the more confidence people show on you and the more people you have showing confidence in you will help you achieve your dreams faster and one thing you should also keep in mind it's not about achieving your dreams but it's also how you achieve your dreams attitude we've always i've always you know I've, i grew up having a father who always instilled this one thing into our minds having positive attitude you know he would constantly remind us that this is important you know to be to, to be strong to to have a to have a strong mind you know and a strong will like strong will power and that is something which and that is something which which i've always held on to especially in times of in times when i'm down when i'm when i'm when i'm lost when i'm confused when things are not going right having the right attitude is the only thing that can save you so keep that in mind vision looking back to my life i've shared this with a lot of my friends people who are close to me will know this about me I've always dreamt of New York. 
You know, I've always wanted to be in New York. I've always, I've always wanted to, 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 to show my work there. You know, I, I always told myself I would do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to, to, to get there. And then two, two weeks ago, I got a call saying that I've been chosen to represent, to represent the country and, 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 and do a show in New York. You know, so, so, I've had that, so I've had that vision in my mind for a very long time. And I've kind of worked towards it. I've worked towards it and believed in it. You know, I've put hope against hope, knowing that I will get there one day. And it's happening now. I've had to, I've had to battle, like, personal and spiritual, you know, like, relation, like, relationships, you know. I've had to struggle, I've had to battle with relationships with my friends, with my family, my lovers, my, and even with God. You know, I've had moments where I've, I've had moments where I've, I've doubted myself. I've had moments where I've lived in fear, where I've just wanted to give up on everything else. You know, I've had, I've had those moments where I'm scared of people judging me and criticizing me, you know, and rebuking me. But despite all these roller coasters of emotions, you know, I've come to, I've come to love, I've come to love and to accept myself and to believe in myself. You know, I've come to look at my imperfections and to live with them and to glorify them. Because unless you don't believe in yourself, the rest of the world will not. So my only message to you is, go out there and live your life. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to love. Don't be afraid to show love. Be passionate. Be passionate about the little things in life. Live your life, like, you know, live your life like today is your last. And show your true colors to the world. Because your true colors are beautiful. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Yes, Thank you so much. Daniel's aim, dead to dream, and his sticking power is the clear repercussion of where he is now. A true inspiration you are. Thank you so much. Daniel's aim.